Hello and welcome to AFLW Today. I'm Alex Donnelly. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm Bryony Dawson. Alex is having a couple of days off. Stats guy is having a couple of days off. He's not well. So it is me, Bryony Dawson, anchoring the show today for AFLW Today. And joining me is the wonderful Olivia Spicer. Social girl Spence is here in the building. Social girl <laughs> Spence is here to hold up the team, mate. We are holding up the team. We very much we, appreciate you being thank here. You. Thanks I'm for. Keen. That's I fine. know, I That's know. Fine. We've done the interview already. We're oh. like. We're feeling good. pumped. I don't know how we've ever done a show any differently oh. to how we're doing it now. We've got a massive show today. Huge. Like massive semifinals yeah. wrap up. Cannot wait to get into that. Um, you're going to tell us where to subscribe. Oh, I can't well, go through all that you stuff. Need to you know that. Like I'm just going to subscribe. Gonna... So you want to follow AFLW Today on TikTok? Oh, I'm not as good as Alex's. <laughs> uh, AFLW Today on X. Uh, subscribe to AFL Today on YouTube and wherever you get all your social platforms. There's a link in the description. That will take you to everything, and that's easier way than me going through it like Alex. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you like my mum, just Google <laughs> AFLW Today and then never watch an episode <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> okay. We can certainly smell it today because footy's back. <laughs> All right, we're going to have uh, a quick look here because Adelaide progressed to their fifth straight preliminary final. final, weren't they, Elite on the weekend? So good. And then Port Adelaide making their first ever preliminary final. And what a game that was, Rodney. Oh, I was very emotional <sighs> during it. I'm a Hogball supporter, but, you know, Port have that dog in them, which we will get into. Yeah. And also uh, coming up at the being announced at the AFLW Awards uh, in a couple of weeks is going to be Mark of the Year and Goal of the Year. And we haven't really spoken about that much mm -hmm. um, on the show. So up for Mark of the Year. Thank goodness, because she didn't win Mark of the yeah. Week uh, <laughs> until the Schultz for her absolute Screamer. ripper. Uh, Matea Breed for her Mark uh, for the Hawks during Indigenous Round. And too. then Rachel Kearns, yeah, her one, yeah, Rachel Kearns from Geelong. Um, her, she took to just like a classic yeah, it was Screamer a classic. up the back, climb, Saw that one, yeah. talk it. Who do you reckon? It's is between gonna... Schultz and Breed for me. Is it? Yeah, they Kearns, were both. Didn't impress you. I know, I'm sorry, that but don't impress they were just me. Know, again Port and Hawks. But I loved Breeds, but Schultz just got up higher for yeah. me, and I think that's what you have to obviously take your mark of the year off. So yeah, yeah it's definitely Schultz for me. Absolute classic. The photo that Michael Wilson took of it as well was just yeah, incredible. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's definitely Schultz for me. How about you? I was just gonna say yeah. that as well. <laughs> I feel like because Schultz was taken on a bigger ground. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it had more media there, more camera yeah. angles, everything like that. And uh, obviously that Michael Wilson yeah. photo, it like great. it's so, so good. So classic. People were calling it like Mark Mark of the <laughs> AFLW <laughs> history. No, it was great. But, yeah, shout out to Breed as well because that was a cracking. And we yeah. do love Hockball on the show. Definitely yeah. social guy Leo. But, um, yeah, yeah Schultz for me. Yeah, it's Schultz for me too. Uh, and then we've got goal of the year contenders. We've got Hannah Man Manyard mm -hmm. from awesome. Adelaide, that mm -hmm. one right on the boundary. boundary. She got out of trouble, mm -hmm. sold some candy, boom. Yep. <laughs> uh, Dee Berries from the Bulldogs, Bulldogs. was really good. Mm -hmm. She did another one right from the boundary, um, snap, and she pretty much celebrated yeah. straight, <laughs> straight, straight off away. the boot. Uh, and then Gemma Houghton. <laughs> That was great. I she liked took one out of the ruck contest and just like she just like yeah. she literally almost like threw the nah. ball up in the air and just went bang. I'm I'm going Houghton for me. Are Controversial. You? I know Manyard got out of the pack and you know all that. It was more of the storytelling, but yeah, I just like Jimmy Houghton as well. I think yeah, had a great season, um, especially on the weekend. So yeah, it's Houghton for me. Mm, interesting and a Schultzy Houghton. Goal yeah, of the year, nah, port, the year. power pair. That'd be, be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be the fairy tale story, would be the bay, wouldn't it? Wouldn't they have to get it? all the way for it to be the fairy tale. Um, I'm going Hannah Munyard. Very fair. I just think there was a little bit more to it than than just the snap on yeah, goal. I can give um, that one. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. Excellent. All right, we're going to go straight now to our interview with Ruby Tripodi. Okay, well, joining us on the pod today, we're very excited. She's got a very big week ahead of her. Please welcome Ruby Tripodi. Woo! <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for having me on. Ruth, we'd so love that you've jumped on the pod because you have a huge week ahead of you. Prelim final this weekend. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Um, now nah, refreshed. It was nice to have the weekend off. So nah, it's an exciting week and yeah, we're all we're all really keen. Did you do anything like special on the weekend? Like obviously you want to make sure your head's like still in the game and you, did you get together and watch some of the semifinals or anything like that? 
Yeah, a group of us actually went to the game Ooh. on Saturday night at Icon, which yep. was so exciting. And honestly, I think it got us all like so much more keen for this week. Um, so yeah, credit to all to Port and Hawthorne for such an awesome game. It was so cool. On that, how do you feel coming up against Port? Obviously, you probably thought during the game that it was going to be the Hawks, but yeah. what a cracking end to that game it oh was. Oh, my God. And, yeah, how does it feel coming up against Port? Obviously, North Melbourne having one of the best seasons we've ever seen, yeah. obviously pretty undefeated except for that one draw. But, um, yeah, how are you guys feeling coming up against Port? Yeah, I mean, do you know what? I think we're all very much of the mindset that the process stays the same, whether it was Hawthorne, it is Port. Um, yeah, I think process stays the same, preparation stays the same. Um but yeah, it's a it's credit to Port Adelaide for an amazing um, semi final on the weekend, and I know we're super excited to play them. And um, I guess having not played Hawthorne during the year, it would have been interesting yeah. playing some, um, a team that we hadn't played. But yeah, to have played against Port Adelaide, um, it'll be great to come up against them again. It's good as a like a sports person and as a very competitive person as well. In my head. I would hate to play the underdog. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like nah. Port have just got like that that dog They've thing got that about dog yeah, in them. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're saying. like, oh god. I guess now that you are playing Port, you have played them before. Obviously, beating them, I think you can go in with that bit of confidence. Do you reckon now? You know, yeah, I think we've got just a heap of confidence and belief in like what we've been doing all year. And I think um, every team that we've come up against, like honestly, the process hasn't changed. Um, it's just been like take every week as it comes, be present, be in the moment. So, um, yeah, we were trying, really trying not to get ahead of ourselves and yeah. we'll come into this week being like, how do we get this job done? Um, but, yeah, it's exciting to play Port. Like they're such a contested team and I think we love that too. So, um, no, it should be it should be a cracking game. And so. Rubes, the, the Rubes, the Ruse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did it. Can I call you Rubes? Thanks. Of um, course, yeah. <laughs> like the Ruse have had such – an incredible season. Obviously, they had a great season last year as well. But but to come in, you know, the the disappointment of last year's final, and then to to come in um, and have just such a, a dominating season. Can you put your finger on anything that was done differently this year that's sort of seen the team um, step up, or is it just a continuation of of the growth of the team? Mm, um. Yeah, I think I think it is just a continuation. Like um, I know last off season there was massive buy in and like heaps of girls did so much work in the off season, and I just felt like that kind of continued into this off season. Like mm. everyone's super hungry, everyone um, is really invested as well, and we've just got such a great group full of great people. And um, I think I've said this before, but like yes, we've got such great stars, but like there's such good people at the end of the day mm. that like it makes you want. It, like you just buy in because you want to follow them and you want to um, be on that journey with them. So, yeah, we're so fortunate to have the talent um, of the players that we do, but also just the way they go about it. They're yeah. so humble. They're so hardworking that like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's no wonder that there's um, such a great group of people. And, yeah, I think also with the staff that we've got, they're so invested and, um, yeah, we're just really fortunate to have the buy-in from all the people around us. That's yeah. awesome. Well, how did it feel to play round one of the finals last week after missing out last year? Obviously, obviously you played nine of the 10 games in your debut season last year, missing out on finals. How does it feel to, you know, be in that environment now? Oh, yeah, it was so special. And, like, I feel so grateful to be a part of that. And I think um, probably knowing what it was like to miss out last year on an individual level, like, um, yeah, I am so grateful to have that opportunity this year. Um, but, yeah, I think, again, like, just with the team mentality, we've been trying to be so present, so um, not trying to get ahead of ourselves and just taking each week as it comes. So, yeah. You seem to do like the right thing at the moment. It so. Yeah. That's no, great. <laughs> and you've had, you've had not the, I guess, oh, I think we can say like typical uh, run and, and lead into your AFLW career because you, so many basketballers. Basketballers. There's so yeah, many basketballers, yeah. netballers, just like Phenomenal sports people, which I definitely classify you as. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came in because uh, you came in through the supplementary draft and, and all that kind of stuff. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a bit different, um, not quite the typical one, like you said. But, uh, yeah, I grew up playing basketball. As so many girls, like there just wasn't opportunity really to play footy um, competitively where I grew up. And then it was my brother um, when I was about 17, his 
local team was getting a women's team and was like, you have to come down, like you'll love it. Like I know you've always wanted to do it because when I was a kid, like I really wanted to play footy, but again, just that yeah. wasn't that yeah. opportunity. So, um, so lucky that like he was so supportive and like mum and dad were too, that they were like, go do it, like you'll love it. And then great support from that um, local club, Williamstown CYs, they've been like, like I'm still so connected to them now. Um, but, yeah, the head coach there, Lawrence Henry, gave me a great opportunity and then from that just was very fortunate to get an opportunity with Western Jets and um, Williamstown VFLW um, in 2019 when I was 18. So from there till 2022 I was, um, yeah, at Williamstown VFLW. A couple of BNFs in yeah, there, mate, a couple that. of back-to-back Two BNFs. Two best and fair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, obviously, you obviously took to it re- really well. You're obviously uh, an incredible sports person can I just I'm sorry to interrupt but I just want to know I want to know about the first game of footy that you played like obviously (laughs) you were so passionate about it you obviously got great skill and 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 sports prowess you know what was it like going on for that first game and coming off and just going like I want to know how good it was Oh, like, yeah, hard to put into words. I think um, even before that, probably that first training session that I went down uh, to yeah, Lucy yeah. was, I was just like, oh, my God, like this just feels right. Like, yeah. I don't know, it just felt so much like I love basketball and it was so much fun. But as soon as I started playing footy, I was like, oh, this is just the best. It's um, so good, so isn't good, it? Because yeah. I remember yeah. exactly the same as you, like going to that first training session of footy and being like, where? has this been all of my life? How have I lived without this before? I know. And do you want to know something quite embarrassing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 we, we love, love it. We love it now. Um, I actually remember kicking um, my first goal at yeah. local. I'm pretty sure I nearly, like, started tearing up. Yeah. Like, I was, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And, like, I think back to it and I'm like, what were you doing? But I just remember being like, oh, my God, like, this is like this is so cool. But that's how emotional <laughs> it is. Like, that's how yeah. much, yeah. like, we'd love the game, you know? Exactly. And as women, obviously, getting to grow the sport and everything. Of course, you've got to be emotional. It's yeah. great to see how far 100%. it's coming and the direction it's going. But mm. at the club, you get the nickname Tuba. And how do you <laughs> end up with that? We want to know the story, how the environment is at the club going as Tuba. Yeah. Um, it's not that exciting, the nickname. <laughs> I wish I had like this really cool story for you, but yeah. it's absolutely not. Um, but Sophia McCarthy, who was on our list last year, who I actually played with at Weemstown um, when we were both there before either of us got drafted, um, she, they, I think, I used to get the name, nickname Ruba at Willie a lot. Like, yeah. Call me Ruba. And then yeah. for some reason, she just um, adapted it into Tuba. And into then. Tuba. When I came to North, it was like, yep, you're tuba. So, yeah, all the girls have run with it. Not really sure why or like, <laughs> why they like it so much, but, um, yeah, I'll take it. It's weird the names that stick, uh, isn't it? It's like mm-hmm. it's, oh, it's, yep. it's so, so <laughs> round. I feel like you need to come up with one like I met Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was like, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was like, I wish I had this like really cool story, <laughs> but good. it's just not. Um, but, yeah, on the culture at the club, like, it's awesome. Like, it's a very um, – fun environment like I think like the balance of having that like laugh but also being really professional and um working hard is like a is really great at the club and I think um it's something that they've been working um towards for a long time and coming in last year you could really tell that um it's just a great environment um and like yeah, just some some really great people and we can have a laugh, take the piss a bit out of each other. So, yeah. um, no, nah, it's a good, good place to be. That's great. Do you think that helps more when you're winning? Oh, for sure. And, yeah. like, but in all honesty, like, when I was at Williamstown in the VFLW, like, we didn't have a lot of success in the time that I was there. But um, one of the reasons, like, I stayed there was because I just loved the club and I loved the people there so much. So mm-hmm. I think... Success definitely helps, but I don't think it's the be-all, end-all. Um, it's definitely what you're there to be doing. And I think um, at North Melbourne we definitely know that it's like what we want and um, there's some very determined people and we're in a fortunate position that we can play some great footy and um, we have a great system that we all buy into. But, yeah, I think culture is a massive thing and I don't necessarily think um, success is the be-all, end-all in terms of culture, but it definitely helps yeah. for sure. Word on the street is that you, and I understand this, word on the street is that you fake tan before every game. (laughs) Is this this true? If so, Uh, what brand? I wish I could deny it. (laughs) (laughs) What brand? Uh, 
<laughs> what brand? I am Barley Body. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I love so a bit of Barley, barley body. body. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I think, like, it's just one of those things that I've always done and um, very much a look good, feel good, play good. So, yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, all the, all the North girls are pretty much on the same same love wavelength, it. I yeah, think. I it. think I've that's gotten so, a few over. That's so good. As a, because uh, we were talking about this before the show, like I am like the whitest, I'm like a vampire, right? I've got like <laughs> transparent skin and I, during um, spring racing for a suit, like I had yeah. a suit on but yeah. my feet were exposed and I tanned my feet. Yeah. It popped the whole outfit. Yeah. It popped oh, the yeah. whole outfit back. I just like, feel like you get like a natural <laughs> glow. Like I love a gradual tan moisturiser like every second day. It's just like a natural glow. It's good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it does. I know. Look like, good, feel good, play good. Exactly. I absolutely love that. Nah. You've got you've to gotta, you've gotta get that <laughs> engraved on your boots or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So you're studying nutrition science at Monash. Uh, what made you w- want to get into that? You're in your final year, is that correct? Yeah, um, and I've been doing it part time for a little yeah. bit now. So I probably could have finished a little bit earlier, but um, now we're getting there. Um, yeah, I think I've just always like probably through sport as well. Like I've always loved um, kind of like the health sciences and being kind of in that um, area. And I think. So many people growing up playing sport, you would probably think you're going to be a physio or yeah. osteo or somewhere in that field. So, um, no, I've landed in nutrition. Both like mum and dad are probably um, kind of in the food industry as well. Nice. So that's kind of always been a part of um, my life growing up. But, yeah. um, no, I just find it really interesting. It's super relevant. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the degree done. <laughs> um, so been a you bit, can be bit honest there, Ruth. Pain. You can be I honest. you be like, oh, I've got to get this thing done. Yeah. Everyone who has studied part-time oh. is like, it's a slog when <laughs> will this end? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it can be tough at times and it's definitely something that I know I've struggled with at times. So, um, no, I'm looking forward to once that's done and, yeah, it'll be good. Um, Rubes, we've heard also that your your dad's a pretty passionate supporter of yours. Does he get down to to every game? Yeah, yeah. Both mum and dad super passionate supporters, but um, dad's a lot more vocal, I would say, than mum is. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if like something that comes to mind is when um, I kicked a, my first goal. <laughs> And, like, they actually got the footage of him and he went off and it's just, like, <laughs> some of my favourite footage oh, ever. That's so wholesome. It's oh, it was, it was the best. But, um, no, nah, super lucky with, like, their support. But, um, yeah, I think he's just – he's always been, like, very passionate, very loud. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you're if at a game, you probably hear him. <laughs> Is your dad a North Melbourne supporter? Like, did you grow up – what club did you grow up supporting? Um, he's no, he's actually Collingwood. Oh, um, oh that's unfortunate, that Ruth. <laughs> are you are you Collingwood before you joined the North? I have grown up Collingwood. Oh, um, oh. It's been nice chatting to you, Ruth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice to meet you guys. Have a good one. Oh. Um, no, no, I think like being at North now, like you just feel such a um I don't know, love for the club and like as much as like yeah, I've grown up Collingwood and I enjoy like watching them play footy, like North Melbourne's definitely um got like a special place in my heart at the moment. So um, no, it's really nice to be part of such a good club and like, yeah, you just work closely with everyone there. So you just want to see everyone do well. It is funny how like when the, when the W started, how um, people did swap teams. If you're an Essendon supporter, I'm Essendon supporter. I didn't like, obviously because Essendon didn't have a team then, but I remember getting to know like all the Collingwood girls and I was like, when I first met them, I'd be like a bit standoffish mm. and then yep. and then they're just awesome. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I can't find it anymore. I love everyone Collingwood. Everyone in the dub is awesome. So. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous yeah. that we have these like just ingrained in us, these like, yeah, emotions? Abso- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Reeves, we've got one last question to ask you and it's a bit of a random one. It's, a, it's one we do at the end of every interview. We ask every player. We're going to give you yep. a scenario and you've got to tell us your answer. Right. So, Ruse make the grand final, and uh, the morning of the grand final, you wake up, you got no idea where you are. You've woken up in a room, <laughs> no idea where you are. You go to leave the room, you get up, and you turn the handle, and the handle breaks off, and you can't, you can't get out of the door, can't get out the windows. You're like, what am I going to do? You pull out your phone. You got one percent battery left. You got like twenty <laughs> seconds to make one call to one person from your team to get you out of there, who are you definitely calling and who are you definitely not calling? All right. 
Wow. Oh, I really hope this isn't the case if we do get there. <laughs> <laughs> the touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Yeah, yeah, touch wood, hopefully not. Um, oh, interesting. Well, I think there'd be a few that I could call. Yeah. Um, there'd be a few, like, getting through there, but um, I'd have to say Taylor Gatt. Um, yeah, or Gatsy. Yeah. Or Gatsy. Yeah. And why, yeah. Why, do you, why do you choose her? Um, oh, she's, yeah, we're – we probably spend like a disgusting amount of time together. Yeah, um, okay. So, yeah, we're very close and like I know that if I called, she'd pick up. Yeah. Um, whereas if I'm going off someone that would actually pick up their phone, I reckon Mia King might not because it would probably be dead as well. <laughs> or she wouldn't know where it is. <laughs> Mia King's the so, unreliable. Yeah. Well, as in I know that if like I got through to her, she'd do whatever she could. Yeah. But. Um, she is known to lose a few things. As well. <laughs> One of those. Yeah. Me and King will be in an even worse situation than you on the morning. <laughs> oh, I hope not. No, we'll, <laughs> we'll make sure we're all sorted. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. That's awesome, Ruby. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. We're now going to call you friend of the pod, pod. Ruby oh. Tripodi. No, you? thank you so much for having me on, guys. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. And good luck this weekend, mate. Thank you so much. How good is Ru- Ruby Tripodi? <sighs> I love that. She just had vibes straight Good away, vibes. didn't she? Yeah, it was great. Um, can't wait to see the bruise on the weekend. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I know. That's going to be very, very exciting. We can now say, Ruby Tripodi, friend, friend of, the, of pod. the pod. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, let's get stuck into let's this first game. On Saturday, semi-final number one, it was Adelaide defeated Fremantle. Adelaide 7-7-49 to Fremantle 1-6-12. What did you make of this one? <sighs> It's disappointing from Freo. Yeah. To get to that semi final and not be able to get at least two goals, it was, I don't think it was great. But then I guess they were coming up against the Crows, but the Crows were in a slump. So they came back, they turned things around. I think they can go all the way, the Crows as well. Do you? I do. I do. I just, I just like them. You really like I them. I do. Dear. And they, uh-huh. they put their foot down on the weekend and they show what they are made of and why they've made five straight preliminary finals in a row. Yeah. Uh, we did say on the pod earlier in the week, well, like, if Fremantle are going to have, like, any sniff yeah. at this, they need to come out firing and they need to be out there like they got nothing to lose. lose. And they, they just, just didn't. They just didn't. Yeah. And they couldn't. I just don't think they had it in them. They looked a little bit flat-footed. They looked tired. Yeah. yeah. Scrappy. But, yeah, Freya found lots of the ball in inside 50s in the first quarter but couldn't get a goal to the third quarter, which yeah. is – it's and you're just, just not going to win games you're of just, footy. You, yeah. you're not you need winning. to convert to win games of footy and if you can't convert, well, you've got no hope. Yeah. I'm sorry. And just the defensive um, Adelaide is so good. Like oh, I know we talk about Marinoff all the time, but yeah. she's just amazing. You, steps you can't up in, not talk about you, her. Just steps up in the big games. you got Hatchard, you got Randall, all three of those girls working together. Yeah. It was just perfect. It was honestly – Textbook stuff. It was uh, it was pretty tough conditions in yeah. Adelaide, though, 35 degrees. Um, so there were extra minutes in mm-hmm. each uh, quarter break. Um, Frio did find a little bit of the ball. They had a fair few inside 50s yep. in that first quarter, but just, yeah, just. Yeah, you can't. You can't in, in, I mean, if you don't convert, it's, uh, it's not going to be Especially good. against a team like Adelaide. Yeah. If you give them any, any sniff of it, yeah, yeah. Any sniff, any weakness. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chelsea Randall had 16 disposals and a goal. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, they're just such a strong and powerful team, aren't they? they? Are. There's, they're, it's hard to, you know, critique a team that's so strong in defense, so strong through the middle. Yeah. There's not, they then, haven't got one strength. They know how to, do all the parts and put them together to make their yeah. game style work. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll give it to Dockers and O'Driscoll. Held up well on defence when they could. O'Driscoll had 18 disposals, six marks. Um, but same for the Crows, Bedell, who was so strong one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. I think the Freo, they can maybe come back next year, but they had, didn't have a consistent season, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. They had their highs, they had their lows. To win a premiership, to go all the way, you have to be consistent. You look at the ruse, what they're doing, and, yeah, I just think it's disappointing as a Freo. And if you, I was a Freo fan, I wouldn't be too happy. I think they need to probably do a little bit in the off-season yeah. uh, as well and just uh, recruit in a players. forward line <laughs> yeah. um, to, <laughs> to, to be able to kick some goals. But still a really great season yeah. by Freo. I know it was up and down, but they are – 
they are coming, mm-hmm. you know, into their time and, yeah. and, and getting. They're growing. Yeah. Um, and especially fun was watching the ruck battle too yes. between um, Mim Strom and um, Jess Allen as well. Um, Strom led the hit outs as well. I know. Yeah. You wouldn't think that. So, no, yeah. it was great. So it was a good battle to she see. She did well. Love that Hatchard had a good game as well. She had 24 disposals. Oh, friend of the pod. And, friend of the pod and Hatchard. Hatchard. Uh, 24 disposals, seven tackles. Um Missed an absolute sitter though, which I yeah, was I, I was know. disappointed in. Um, and Maddie Newman had a great game as well mm-hmm. with twenty four um, disposals. The closest uh, Frio was getting to that was Gab Newton, who had nineteen disposals, and McCarthy and O'Driscoll both on um, eighteen. And Ebony Antonio, I needed her a little bit more this season, yeah. and especially in this game. Um, two behind. Two behind. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah, it's disappointing. I mean, yeah. When you, especially in these kind of games, when you do get an opportunity, once you do get through the Crows defence, you can't let that go to waste. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it's disappointing. How do you think the fan bases are feeling, Brian? Um, I think for your fan bases uh, will be feeling obviously disappointed, but I think they'll be pretty happy with where they got yeah. to and what they were able to achieve this season. Adelaide fan bases are like, great, tick, yep. Tick. Got this one. Massive game this Massive week. game. Massive. That's going to be the real test. Yeah. But, yeah, I think Freo, they can be – it's disappointing, obviously. They had their highs. They had their lows. But to win a premiership, you can't – you have to grow through each season. Oh, you have to grow. You have to grow as a culture, grow as a club. Still young times for them. And, yeah, I think they should take the positives and bring them into next year and keep building. And Adelaide, do you think they're taking their best footy into next season? Yeah, they are. Case? They had their slump. Ooh. Every team has to have a little You're bit a big of Adelaide a, fan. I, I now, like the crumb. I like the crumb. Um, I think, yeah, they're on fire. The confidence is back, expecting a solid fight against the Lions next week. They're just vibing. They're having a good time. They tick the box, look ahead vibing. now. They're just vibing. Just they did vibing. what they needed to do on the weekend. Now they look ahead for the biggest challenge they're going to come across. Yeah, agreed. Well said, Spence. Oh, thanks. All right, let's go on to the next game. It was Hawthorne oh. versus Port Adelaide. My heart, my heart is still pumping. pumping. I'm still sweating. <laughs> um, Hawthorne, six. 13, 49 to Port Adelaide, 7, 8, 50. Wowzers. Wowzers. Sweet baby Hazers. What happened what happened in this here? game? Well, so one team has that dog in them and that is Port Adelaide. <laughs> That's what you want to talk about, <laughs> isn't it, Liv? You want I, to talk about the dog? I have been a hockball fan all season. I was like, you know what? Obviously, we couldn't have got this, but if it was a North Hawk grand final, if that could have happened, that would have been an absolute cracker. Yeah. Um, but it's not. Yeah. And it won't be. So Port Adelaide, they just turned things around. 22 points down, biggest three-quarter time margin comeback in AFLW history. Mm-hmm. Two weeks in a row for Hawks with bad kicking in the footy. Um, they could have buried this game, but they let the fit and firing power Finish with a wave of attack. Yeah, they really did, didn't they? It's like they didn't even show up in that yeah. last in that last quarter. Um, what was it? Five five goals, twelve to three goals, yeah. two at three quarter time. Um, the Hawks should have absolutely <sighs> put should've... them away. They know how to finish. Yes, it was inaccurate kicking, but they had so much more of the footy. Exactly. I think it was very. They had more opportunity. Very unexpected. If I was in the Hawks team. And I was 22 points up against Port Adelaide in a semi final. I'm not taking my foot off the, <laughs> the gas. gas. 22 points isn't that much. You got to kick straight. Right. And yeah, and I they, mean, they had amazing. Like Fleming was insanely classy. She was phenomenal. phenomenal. Every every possession mm-hmm. had such huge impact on the game. I think she only ended up with, um, I think around 15, 16 disposals. Yeah. But Every single one of those yeah, disposals counted. She was everywhere. She had a goal, five tackles, four clearances. When you looked at the stats sheet, Hawks were mainly up the top of it. But, yeah, they couldn't – I don't know what happened in that final quarter. It just changed the way the game obviously played out. Um, Inaccurate kicking. Yeah. I've got – oh, Stevenson. Stevenson, yes. Hawks board, only kicked one goal, three. Yeah. One goal, three. Good. And then Fleming and McDonough had one goal, two, two each. each. So, yeah. So – yeah, it's uh, it's Greta Bodie, I thought had a really good game. Um Abby Dowrick was oh, absolutely sensational. sensational. Gemma Houghton, oh, two goals too. They have so many players in the Hawthorne team that are just ins- insane, incredible disposal of Port Adelaide. Team. Port Adelaide, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was getting confused. Um, um yeah, they just had a great time and it was good. But I were, everyone stepped up. You had Tico, Dowrick, Houghton, Schultze, like so everybody good. just 
put it together. Well, I was going to shout out Houghton from Port. 13 disposals, 2.2 goals. She played a vital role in the game. You looked at the highlights. You looked at the stats. She was everywhere, in my yeah. opinion. But it's despite hitting the post to get a winning goal, that was yeah. the one downfall yeah. from Houghton. Overall, great footy by Port. And, um, yeah, they really increased their standard. As I said, they've just got that dog in them. What were your thoughts in the like in those dying moments? I think there was like two minutes or a minute and a half to go. Hawks are up by a point. It goes into <sighs> Port's Ford 50. It's in the goal square. They miss it. And, and they rushed behind. And Hawks rushed her behind. I don't I don't think you rush her behind, behind in, in that moment. When you're up this by a point. This isn't the first I think quarter. You do, ev- you do a you clearing kick. Get it out. You do get a clearance. Ever you can. Well, that lost the game for them. Like I mean, you risk them scoring a goal, yeah. right? But I, don't, I just, I think that was like real inexperience there yeah. in rushing that. It wasn't, it wasn't. Super, super pressure. Do you know what I it mean? Wasn't, yeah. Like if you have the ball up from there, or you get a clearing kick, or at least a hand pass, or anything, it just, it get was it a, towards the boundary line. You do not I think, concede a point when you're a point up. I think I don't know what went through their minds. Maybe they just I didn't know how long they left freaked. on the clock. They just yeah. freaked out. They lost they the freaked, plot. Um, I think. But yeah, you can't be doing that kind of thing. And yeah, obviously we saw in the post match press conference that Daniel Webster was very disappointed. He was. He was. Um, what's the word? Angry, emotional, I don't even... <laughs> like like, like a shell of a human. Yeah. That it really, really um, took it out of him. And I think the magnitude of it, when you think about the season that the Hawks had, right, yeah. everyone's been talking about hot ball, they won a million bucks for their yeah. club. But, you know, <laughs> like he, what he was able to do with that club was absolutely incredible. Turning but things But then around. you look at the end of the day, if you can't win a semi... When you're 22 points up, up going into the last quarter, and none of the other stuff matters. It doesn't does it? matter. It doesn't matter. I think and that's what it comes down to. Well, you want a flag. That's that's what you want in footy. And God. I think, yeah, that rush behind and obviously, yeah. It's, I mean, it's so, it's so many things. So many. It just, wasn't just that, but it was a whole bunch of things. He in the was final quarter, but. devastated. Like my heart was breaking Drop. for him there. And <sighs> I think in your first year as a coach, mm-hmm. To have a record set against yeah. you in the you know, win your in the club dime. a million bucks putting yeah. that together obviously yeah. combined with the men's but but then the biggest comeback yeah. in AFLW LW history three. in the semi final <sighs> against you and then having to face the press <laughs> yeah. straight after the and game that's what people remember that's what oh. people remember sadly and that's what we're talking about but I think yeah. Daniel Webster can be proud of what he did oh, this 100%. year insane to turn yeah. that club around compared to last year. Bring up the culture, bring up the girls to enjoy playing footy mm. with their team and winning because winning makes people happy. Yeah. And I think, yeah, to see them do that, I think it's incredible and they yeah. they should take that into next year and hold their heads high yeah. and be proud of their progress. All in all, a great season. Mm-hmm. Lauren Arnell, Port Coach, though, she, she mentioned in the press co- conference after that, you know, that since they came into the competition, they've had a rough couple of yeah. years, some really disappointing moments. Um, and she just talked about the lessons that they've learned and you carry that defeat, you carry yep. that disappointment and mm-hmm. the team that she has that sparks them. Yep. And she said that there's a few players with the attitudes where they just go, not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. I'm going to do something, something about, about this. And they they have people like that. really, really um, stand up. Yep. So well done to Port. Because Congratulations. Lo- <laughs> what a huge... <laughs> They've got a massive game in yeah, them this weekend, though, don't uh, they? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have Port up there in my top predictions toward the end of the year, so no, I can't even remember where I. Put I know. Them. Well, I mean, we've got obviously we've got the Crows, we've got the Brews, and we've got the Lions, which everyone knows we're going to have up there. But yeah. yeah, Port. I think it's it's a testament to them of how good their seasons have mm-hmm. been to come and grow throughout the the season. So no, great stuff to them, and hats off to um, Hawks as well. Yeah, how are the fan base is feeling. The then? fan base is uh, Hawks disappointed. Um, as I've just said, um, yeah, disappointing to not get the win. You, yeah. That that was a must win and should have won that game. And Porter just they just vibing. They're here for the ride and having a good time. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. They're like, woo, go pair. <laughs> yeah, fan bases. As as a a non Hawthorne supporter, um, I felt sick for them. Yeah, like, that's fair. On Saturday, and then when I woke up Sunday as well, yeah. I was like. Oh, God. Wouldn't want to be Daniel Webster. Oh, God. So, yeah, I think the fan bases are feeling pretty pretty shabby over at Hawthorne. And I yeah. think Port, um, they have the belief. They do have that belief. But on that note, I don't, I think 
the Port fans are going to be a bit scared ahead of the, the next they, game yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, they've, they've got something to be yeah, scared about. Scared about, but that's yeah. all right. Hey, they did it against Hawks. Who knows what can happen? So something even more disappointing than the Hawks <laughs> is the fact that Alex beat us in the footy tip in this week. Alex got it right. Yeah. yeah. Big two. You, me, This stats dude guy. can't get any tips right throughout the whole season. <laughs> he's he on t- a comeback. Oh, he tips one. Alex, <laughs> if you're watching, well done, mate. Well done. Proud good. of you. Yeah, good stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, Alex with two and the rest of us with one because we all tipped hot ball. Yeah, we certainly did. Um, okay, full credit goes to best team of the round. I'm going Crows. It has what to be crows. crows. I'm going Crows. It has to be. After a tough last week, able to come back. Like, yes, all right, in the other game, but Port weren't perfect the whole game, neither were Hawks. Crows were perfect the whole game. All right, mate. All right. Okay, I'll let you have the Crows. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm going Port Adelaide. Okay, fair. <laughs> um, yeah, like tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah, was tremendous. Effort. Yeah. But the Crows are just tremendous for four quarters. You can't yeah. win a game. Well, you can win a game not playing four quarters of footy, but the Crows did, so yeah. good on them. Uh, best on ground, player. I'm obvious, but I'm going Marinoff. 32 disposals, a goal, 12 tackles, leading the stat sheet once again. Go on the AFLW app, match leaders. Her name is there three times out of four. So, and just overall carrying the midfield along with Hatchard for support. And Randall deserves a shout out for me too. Yeah, Randall, excellent, excellent. She's she's really stepped up over the last few weeks as well <laughs> when the team has needed her. Um, my best on, I'm going to give to Jazz Fleming. Yes. She she was everywhere. Was everywhere, no. Nah. Everywhere, instrumental uh, in the Hawks, devastated to not get it across the line. But, yeah, definitely a, a shout out for her for this yeah, week. Nah, best on. Hard to pick this week. There was a lot of players that showed up for their Yeah, teams, massively. So. Uh, okay, prelim finals matchup. A I'm quick excited. look. North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. What do you reckon? I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. I think North are obviously going to get the job done. I know I was confident in Port, but you can't laugh at the flaggers. Like, Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. I hope Port can put up the fight, though. I hope they can keep up with them. We obviously saw that um, – Frio couldn't do that with the Crows, which we hoped for. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can get that in this game instead of a absolute smashing by the flag ruse. <laughs> I think we're going to get an absolute smashing by yeah, the flag ruse. Yeah, I know. But uh, I think Port have had their – I think they've had their big game. Yeah. Um, and we see this a lot in sport. You know, the underdog comes in and wins in yeah. a, in a mm-hmm. you know, a quarter or a semi. Yeah. And then the next week reality sets in yeah. when they're actually yeah. up against the top teams yeah. and it's like – It's too much. <laughs> they've used all their hard energy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, as a neutral of neutral fan, I like to see just, like, contested games. So that's yeah. why I love the Hawks vs. Port game. But we'll see what happens. But, yeah, North mm. Melbourne are going to get the job done. As they certainly early are. Look. Yeah. Uh, Brisbane versus Adelaide. <sighs> this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. This could define the tipping as well for us. Uh, I don't know who to pick, honestly. I think uh, we could we get a grand final a rematch? Like a rematch, a North Brisbane. Uh, could we get a grand final? See, that would be good. Imagine going into the grand final rematch. And then North, then North get the job done. Oh, how good would that be? But yeah. I think this is going to be a cracking game. Both te- both teams showing up. Um, yeah, I think I just don't know who to pick. What are your thoughts? It's a really it's a really hard one to pick. Yeah. Um I think Brisbane are probably gonna yeah. get across the line. I need to look at it more Same. this week. I might change my mind seven hundred times um, before we do the the preview mm-hmm. on Thursday, but it's it's going to be an absolute ripper. Yeah, I just hope it's high scoring as well. A lot of converting goals, which you know these teams are good at doing. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a cracking match. And, yeah, we'll look more into that in our Thursday show. Yes. Excellent. Okay. That's it. That's our show oh. for today, AFLW Today. Thank you very much, oh, Olivia thank Spicer, you for, for jumping me, on everyone. the spicy one. The normal crew shall be back on Thursday. <laughs> they will. Excellent. <laughs> I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is rested. Um, okay. Yeah. You needed to do – I'm going to try and do these social right. things. Um, bloody get around <laughs> us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, and, of course, YouTube. YouTube. That's the best place to watch Yeah, the YouTube's it. the YouTube. best place. Get and on then... here. Subscribe. Like our shows. For whatever reason, if you want to send us your details so you can get, you know, a, mm-hmm. a notification when yeah, we do the Yeah, put the notification thing. bell on. Make get sure you there. follow us on everything. And, yeah, make sure you check out Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia. And that's about it from the Sports Today Network. Uh, we're here for all your sporting needs um, during the EPL season and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Here for all your sporting needs, <laughs> folks. We've heard it here first. All right. That is enough for AFLW today. Today.
today. Thank you very much. And remember that footy's back. <laughs>